Mr. John Luther Parker, a 63-year-old uh, gentleman from Florida in U.S., had come to me uh, about three months back with a problem called atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a rhythm disorder. That is uh, the electrical problem of the heart where the top chambers of the heart beat very erratically and chaotically. Basically, the heart will be quivering instead of uh, contracting. This problem actually dates back uh, to three years ago when he had a viral infection of the heart called viral myocarditis for which he was uh, in uh, intensive care unit for almost a month. He was on all uh, life supporting devices uh, because of a serious condition including a device called left ventricular assist device. Somehow he made a recovery and as a sequel of this condition he developed a mild LV dysfunction that is a heart uh, pumping a little bit uh, less effectively than normal and a rhythm problem as I mentioned earlier the atrial fibrillation. In this uh, there is a uncoordinated activity of the heart the top chambers beating erratically and chaotically and the bottom chambers are transmitting the above impulses at usually half the rate very irregularly. So this can reduce the cardiac output that is the pumping efficiency of the heart and uh, thereby uh, leading to the easy fatigability than breathlessness on exertion. But the main problem with atrial fibrillation is uh, when the heart is uh, instead of uh, contracting when it is quivering there is a stagnation of blood within the chambers which can get clotted and uh, which can embolize to the brain leading to a stroke. This is the main problem with atrial fibrillation. So patient, he was uh, managed, he was put on medications to control the heart rate and then he was uh, given electrical shock to put the heart back to the normal rhythm uh, which is a uh, uh, well documented uh, treatment modality. But uh, unfortunately within few days after the electrical cardioversion he again his heart was uh, back into the abnormal rhythm and this procedure was repeated almost uh, two to three times on medication electrical cardioversion but despite all these measures his heart was coming back to the abnormal rhythm called atrial fibrillation. There were few options. One is uh, antiarrhythmic drugs, which are potentially very toxic. They have got a side effects, which the patient was not very keen on taking because uh, they need to be taken for a longer time. And uh, the efficiency of these drugs in uh, suppressing the arrhythmia is only 30 to 40 percent. And such patients, they have uh, another option called uh, radio frequency ablation. Here, we'll have to employ a 3D mapping system. This equipment helps us to create. Uh, 3D geometry of a desired chamber of the heart where we can move the specialized catheters in a real time and uh, this was uh, done in John Luther with the uh, help of 3D mapping system we created the geometry of the left chamber of the left upper chamber of the heart and then with the uh, help of a special uh, cool uh, cooling catheters what we call cool uh, flow catheters or thermocool catheters we created a series of ablation lesions that is burns inside the left chamber of the heart at several places so that the electrical impulse will not find uh, electrical pathway to conduct this abnormal electrical uh, uh, impulses. So at the end of the procedures uh, we cardioverted the patient and the patient was in normal rhythm and subsequently uh, in a day he was up and he was discharged on the third day. Now almost three months since the procedure, he continues to be in a normal rhythm with minimal medications. I've asked him to be in touch with his local cardiologist and hopefully we'll be able to stop his uh, uh, medications uh, after uh, probably six months if uh, his heart continues to be in normal rhythm. Uh, my name is John Parker. I am uh, an American writer uh, and attorney. I have come to Bangalore for medical procedure. I have had uh, chronic atrial fibrillation for about three years. It's a condition that affects uh, many hundreds of thousands of Americans and others around the world. Puts them at greater risk for um, having a stroke, th having blood clots in the in the cardiovascular system and so forth. It's not something that you want to uh, uh, to deal with every day so you try to get it taken care of however you can. One of the ways of doing that other than medicine 
is um, a procedure called uh, radio frequency ablation, which is a process where they uh, go into the heart and the, um, the instruments are inserted up into the heart and they use uh, a high pitch frequency to um, essentially burn away the inside part of the heart that's causing the electrical malfunction. And it takes a very highly skilled and knowledgeable practitioner uh, to be able to perform this procedure. He's a cardiologist in addition to, uh, to being a specialist in this field of uh, electrophysiology. The hospital where the procedure was done is known as Fortis Hospital, which is um, one of a um, chain of hospitals in India. Uh, they're all over the country. The doctor that I had here at the hospital is uh, Dr. Shashidar. He and I had discussions over the telephone uh, to talk about my problem. He reviewed all my medical records from my cardiologist in the United States and um, uh, I became confident in his ability to help me. The procedure was done uh, approximately a week ago and uh, I've been uh, staying here in Bangalore um, at a hotel nearby the hospital and uh, uh, basically recuperating from the procedure and everything has gone uh, extremely well. So any kind of medical procedure like, uh, like this is a very serious undertaking and I think people should, should approach it quite cautiously and be very confident in their doctors and be very confident uh, in their hospital as I am in Fortis Hospital. And, um, and I, I think most people who come for, for such a procedure will be very, very pleasantly uh, and happily surprised at the kind of uh, care and attention and service that they receive from uh, health care providers. Really, I have no hesitation in recommending um, that uh, patients from other countries consider uh, having similar procedures done here. One of the reasons you want to consider um, com coming to a foreign country from America for such a procedure, I could have easily had it done in the United States. The cost for me, from what I was able to tell, and often is not easy to research these things. It's sometimes quite difficult to find out what costs really are going to be. Uh, but as best I could tell, uh, the cost for a procedure like mine would have been up in the, in the area of $100,000. I was able to um, have this, the same procedure done with the same equipment and a uh, very skilled practitioner and hospital care and everything uh, for one-fifth or one-sixth of that cost. I think the, uh, the, the payoff is, uh, is well worth all the effort that, that um, a patient would go through to, uh, to accomplish uh, getting their procedure done here.